Happy Monday, everybody. No, Friday. Ah! <laughs> they might be listening to it on Monday. Yeah. Be. Well, uh, hello. Insert day of the week here. We're going to start the Weird Things program in just a moment. Hi, everybody. Yo, yo. How's your Friday? Hey, Bryce. Bryce, I'm in a little bit of an echo. Actually, a lot. I got it. I mean, is that what I sound like? Oh. My voice is so weird. How's that? Weird, 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 weird. Is it is it still echoing for you? No, no. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Hi everybody. We're gonna do the weird things program in just a moment. Well, hello. Uh yeah. How's it how's how's your Friday going, everybody? Uh it's it's one So of far days. so good. I, I did I did the thing where Oh, was I tempted to make an excuse to not go to work out today, but then I showed up. Yep. And you got through it? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't. Uh, although I, I did make a, a faux pas because, uh, you know, there's a lot of looking over people's shoulders on, you know, for their for their answers on the test. <laughs> I, I can't hear what you're saying, what we're doing or whatever. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm... I, I, but uh, uh, apparently, I violated protocol on one thing. But uh, hey, new guy here. Yeah, we we're talking. Uh. There's a guided workout, Orange Theory, that Brian did, and uh, uh, you were you were being a little a bit of a looky loo. Did you get called out for being a looky loo? No, I got called out for just walking in and forgetting the step where I had to, you know, get assigned a station. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you just walked in and went. Oh well, my I mean, God! He just went. Oh Jesus, Brian! I, my God! Hey, hey, it is hey, the hey, most hey, Brian hey, thing. Hey, hey, it hey, is hey. the most Brian boundary to test. <laughs> just to be like, like, hey, whatever. I'm here. <laughs> that seems free. Uh, okay, <laughs> Justin, uh, you would have more moral authority if you weren't the one who reminded me that you didn't actually have to have a reservation. And so I was in that headspace, and I'm yeah, like, this is your I fault. Made Justin. it to the train on time. Well, let's go, and then and it turns out. No, you still have to check in. Well, that's, uh, that's something you should have <laughs> reiterated. This is your fault, Justin. My fault. Yes, Honestly. it quite okay. literally is. Guys, what? I, really? Because the heuristic I had was. The yeah, heuristic. No, th think the of it heuristic. like a train. Think of it like a train. Justin said it's like a train. Just make sure you get there on the train. But you have to, like, show someone your. Yeah, you still have ticket. to buy a ticket to the train. Even if you just walk up. I know that now. Yeah. Okay. Know that now. Well, all right. I'm sorry. I didn't know that the, the, the ticketless train metaphor <laughs> was the dominant one. You know, you'll do so, better next time, Justin. Justin, Brian, just for me and you, Justin knows me. Yeah. I would be so embarrassed after that, I would never go back. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a gym story where uh, I went to the gym near me in Fort Lauderdale. There were two girls that worked up front. They're very cute. And I was talking to one of them and I started working. I was getting good shape. And one of the girls came back there and just started talking to me, like just started, kept talking to me. And then like, uh, like I got her number, but like, she gave me your number. I'm like, cool. And, uh, I get home and I go, I realize I don't have the rest of the number. So I go call the gym. I go, Hey, so-and-so there. And the other girl picks up like, you can't be calling here and talking to da, 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 da. And, I the other girl I liked and talked to her before, but I realized that like maybe there I was some the, issue. Yeah, because I asked the other one's number, and anyhow, I just felt so bad. I never went back just, to the gym. That's it. Oh. I mean, the only <laughs> thing worse I could imagine is to have that experience and then have your friends mock you live on the internet about it. <laughs> True, Brian. That is true. The only thing I can think of worse than that is have the blame deflected onto you live <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> I don't know. That seems pretty mild. I don't know. I don't know. You're, you'll do better next time. Seems Justin. pretty bad. <laughs> pretty bad. Uh, Are we all done comparing? <laughs> Let's put him back in our pants, zip it up, and do the show. <laughs> all right, Andrew, you want to do a weird thing? Surely. Okay. I'll count you in. In. Three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm in me, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. yo yodel yo, -yo, -yo. Brian, not wait for his name to be called. Mm -hmm. Jump to wherever he wants Brushwood. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think I did wait until my name was called, and I responded at an appropriate time. Yes. I stand corrected. You were talking about another thing, but that's okay. No, that was pre-show. There was a pre-show yeah. thing. This is why you have to watch live. Otherwise, you miss it. Yeah. Exactly. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. So, gentlemen, uh, today or this week, it's actually kind of a pretty big deal. I think this just happened yesterday. And that would be the first paying passenger on board Virgin Galactic. Yeah. Did you know did and, they go or did they pay? They, they went, they went, Brian. They, okay. they went. All right. Yeah. They <laughs> because, went. Yeah. Because uh, Brian's like all of a sudden going, hmm, I could have the first paying passengers for Brushwood Aerospace. Right, exactly. Who wants to be the first person to buy a ticket to Jupiter? <laughs> I'm selling them now. <laughs> But I can imagine Brian in the backyard. You got like a trailer with some seats built on it, and you're explaining to people like, "We're gonna get some engines. Yeah, we're gonna build this out a bit. Let me tell you about the craft beer selection. That's gonna be amazing <laughs> on your trip." So, how many people went up? Is it a one person thing? A whole crew? No, because remember the the they're using uh, I think Spaceship Two. I forget what they're, what they're calling it, but basically they need to have a pilot and I think a co-pilot. So there are two pilots on the space plane and two on the carrier plane. So it takes a total of four pilots. And then as far as passengers, um, I guess they they flew some Italian Air Force officers. Oh. Okay. So uh, so so it's like a like uh, a, six stag, people a stag board. party. Yeah. Uh, and obviously you know the backdrop of this in terms of the national and international conversation is around extreme tourism the tragedy that happened with the uh the titan, the seagate uh, titan sub yeah. uh obviously virgin galactic is a company that's been around and very very public for a lot longer uh than that and and we have seen a lot of trips uh that that, that they have made but the promise of space tourism once something thought to be the primary economic driver of space exploration uh now damn near a decade after we've been uh, uh driving the price down on reusable rockets seems to have cashed its first check which is pretty cool well yeah there's been well blue origin's been cashing some of those yeah and and you've had you've had actually falcon Oh no, we lost you. Damn, it does look like an album cover though. <laughs> we lost you at Falcon Heavy. Uh... Oh, this was the I think they were the original OG people who were going to try to do this, which is I don't know, I don't know which who was founded first, but you remember the the Starship, excuse me, Spaceship 1 yeah, first flew right. something like 20 the years ago. SpaceX. So then prize. then then okay, so uh, or, sorry, I sorry, I must uh, have... uh, 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 X Prize. X Prize. Yeah. I, I must have misinterpreted the the setup then. So this is notable because it's just the first time that Virgin Galactic has done it. Yes, the first okay. time the leaguered Virgin Galactic's done it. Gotcha. Okay, so this is yeah. No, I mean they've talked about doing this. I mean, geez, I remember when we were doing uh, eye tricks that uh, uh, this was yeah. a constant conversation that they were going to do something with Copperfield uh, uh, to promote space tourism, and he was going to you know go up into space and do some trick with the moon or like make the moon disappear or something like that. Uh, <laughs> I still your moon. <laughs> yeah, but like it, that that's how long. I mean, we're, we're talking about oh six, oh seven that they were that they were beating the drum about yeah. space tourism. Yeah, so it's been been a long time. People have been waiting for this. You know, they were selling tickets and stuff to this a long, you know, ages ago. I think they're one of the first credible launch providers and that credible in that they actually had a vehicle to sort of offering this, but getting to the point where they felt they could take people up. They had a tragic accident before they've had a test stand accident. They've had, you know, a lot of issues along the way. Um, I would say the difference between this and like what happened to ocean gate and the Titan sub was the Titan sub there, there has been some deep submersibles around for you know, almost a hundred years and really, really deep, deep stuff since like the Trieste, which is like 60 years now, almost 60 years ago. We've had a pretty solid understanding of the science of that. And that was a case where they're like, yeah, we're going to ignore that. We're going to do our own thing. 
where everybody else was like, no, you can't ignore this. Like, this is like real. And they did it anyways. And then they had a tragedy happen where this and, and, is. And, and, and specifically we were talking about the carbon, carbon fiber, fiber hull. Right? Yeah, exactly. That, that, yeah, that was, that car- was the biggest was... thing that it wasn't iron. It wasn't steel. And they were not doing repeated testing on it to, to see how it would hold up. It, it was carbon fiber. And eventually what happened is what many people were fearful would happen with a carbon fiber hull, which is, uh, yeah. And, and we don't. We assume that. We assume yes, that. And, we do. And there, we there do. Two, there were two points of failure. One was the carbon fiber hole itself. The other one was the port window, which was not rated for that depth. So, oh, created a problem. The other. Uh, yeah. Can you say? Can you just say that again, Andrew? From it wasn't rated for that depth. Well, yeah, you use, you use carbon fiber in things where you don't want rigid. You want a certain amount of flexibility. Generally speaking. Um, use carbon fiber on wings. Why? Because when a plane has vibrations, you don't want a solid medium. That it just basically because that creates fractures. With carbon fiber, the little they can have, they can take a little bit of stress, and that energy gets basically expelled. And Andrew, we 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 need a we need to stop because we're 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 getting yeah build up we, cracks. Uh, we, 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 sorry, Andrew, we lost a lot of that, um, uh, with that connection. Um, yeah, it said with the carbon fiber, it can build up a lot of cracks over time. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know if, do, do we know how much they, uh, I guess that's, this is a longer thing to, to litigate it, but how much testing was done on carbon, on a carbon fiber, you know, how much it can, uh, withstand because if, if it, before it. Well, I think the part part of what the problem was is that uh, there was no testing after it had gone down a few times. And that, uh, in the words of James Cameron, he said that this is an insidious problem in that it can ge- lull you into a false sense of security uh, by going down successfully several times, which it did. But you never know when that bill is going to come due. At least that's the fear with a carbon fiber hull. We'll, we'll obviously continue to find out exactly what happened with this. And then on top of that, you have the layer that the... Um uh, the CEO appeared to have a bit of bravado when he said flippantly stuff like, that's the nice thing about doing stuff in international waters. Nobody can tell you no. Right. They uh, told me not to do this, but I did it and we're making it work. Well, I, I, that works as long as you're alive, buddy. Was was it on this program that we talked about the <laughs> the weird parallels to breaking a brick over my head? To, or maybe that was... It's hard to keep track. I talk a lot of metaphors, but but and you used to break bricks over your head. Uh, correct. Uh, uh, <laughs> weird that I don't remember things yeah. so well now. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, uh, old sideshow stunt: you take a cinder block, put it on your head, sledgehammer smashes it. Uh, the 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 trick, the secret is that every time you slam it, there are thousands and thousands of imperceivable microfractures that happen, and that is the bulk of the energy being absorbed, uh, and damaging the structural integrity of of the brittle nature of of the the brick and then finally you know on the fourth or fifth hit you get a very impressive all of a sudden it crumbles all down Mm -hmm. at once and that's the visual that 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 people hold on to and so likewise it's 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 uh, essentially, that seems to be a version of what the operating theory is uh, on this vessel. Yeah. Is every time it went down successfully, it looked like nothing happened, but thousands and thousands of micro fractures got to a place where suddenly it was brittle enough I, that all at once it, it imploded. We saw a great example of that when Elon Musk demonstrated the Cybertruck. Mm, yes. Oh, that's the, right. The, yeah. The because because they practice it a few times. Yeah, they hit they hit the door panel with that mat with the, the sledgehammer a couple times. Then they threw the steel ball, and I'm watching this. And you know, when magic like Brian, like yeah, we work a lot with glass and stuff, and you realize things about micro fractures breaking. Like there's like a lamination layer. There's these little things that happen. I remember they went pound pound. I'm like, that's not going to be good. I don't care what your material is. And they threw the steel ball, and it cracked. I'm like, of course it cracked after that because you created all those. You basically broke this broke the barrier that was keeping the rest of it from cracking God, what a what a what a legendary moment both both for <laughs> <laughs> both uh whether you're laughing at or laughing with uh it is very impressive that elon musk is the type of person to just shrug and be like 
I don't know, try it again. <laughs> yeah. It was really And then something. he does. Yeah. And then he does. Let's sell t shirts. <laughs> now we have the t shirt. I have the t shirt for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, here's our car. <laughs> so congrats to Virgin Galactic. We've talked about before uh, some of the struggle. I think it was a Virgin Orbit was having a lot of trouble. They, yeah. they did bankruptcy. Um, and some of the other Virgin really advanced projects are you know facing some challenges. But, you know, it's it's, you know, congrats to them because it's space. They reach space. And I think. Um, as far as, you know, reusability and whatnot, like, you know, you have New Shepard, which Blue Origins rocket, which well, mm -hmm. that, that did have a blow up, but just as a cargo, but that is a, basically essentially a fully reusable system for going that can reach not orbit, but can reach, you know, the Carmen line. And this is another one that can reach space and, you know, by all accounts is fully reusable. And so, you know, that's. So very uh, uh, impressive, but because it's suborbital, you know, one thing we don't, we, I don't think we've spent much time talking about this, but it's like suborbital implies you didn't make it all the way around the planet. Where does it take off from and where does it land? Well, would you talk about this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or anytime, oh, the, anytime there's a suborbital flight, like where, yeah, I mean, they go, they, they do the Mojave because remember these things, they're going pretty much essentially straight up like 62 miles. So they're not going very far away. Like, like these things land back pretty close to where they took off from because they're, you know, oh, they're not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so I, I, you know what? I don't know why I never really thought about that. I always thought of suborbital, like we made it most away around the earth. No, not quite orbital, but, no, but, no. but, but we're talking about pretty much straight up and then, then a pencil, coming on down. pencil drop, right, right back. And, down. and in this case, because of the shuttlecock design, you know, they're just going to steer towards the landing strip yeah. close to where they took off. Yeah. I mean, these things, Brian, like they don't, I don't no, no disrespect towards them, but like these things are barely supersonic. They go maybe 790 miles per hour to go orbital. You needed to go 22,000 miles per hour. Wow. Mm. Okay. So, so th 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 that this is a big difference. Yeah. This is closer to the experience of, oh, not even like one of those Estes uh, home model rockets that goes straight, straight up and then parachutes down. Uh, yeah, it's, I, mean, it's, you can, I would say more impressive than that. Yeah. Your mileage may be. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you could build, I mean, you could build, they talk about things called sounding rockets. You know, hobbyists can build things that can get, go suborbital. You know, you can, you could, in theory, you could build a rocket that can go lap around the moon and never reach orbital velocity. Well, I, I, I'll tell you the most remarkable part of this is the fact that they, they cross the Kármán line and it's, it's a stark reminder that, Andrew Maine promised that SpaceX was going to cross the Carmen <laughs> line and then oh, land oh, safely. Oh. <laughs> pies, 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 pies. When is that happening? I, I, I've got the pies in front of me now, guys. No, 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 you. That would we have been the perfect moment. You should him right in his surprise birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of geniuses there. No, that's it. Oh. I know. That it, I'm not going to tell you who, Andrew, but I know somebody else that lives in your house. And I'm, not gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to text her to make it happen. <laughs> that's the terrifying thing, is she would. Yeah. <laughs> oh, surprise. <laughs> So, uh, so do we know like when uh, when Galact Virgin Galactic is going to do this again? Like, is it going to be another fifteen years <laughs> before they do it again? Uh, well, hopefully it'll be sooner. Hopefully they feel like they've got everything worked out. Yeah, you know the it, it's a very the my 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 note about this is initially. The Spaceship One and Spaceship Two sound like kind of a really cool platform. Oh, oh no, I think that's us. Did we drop? I think now, 
now that, you know, here we are, it is 2023 and we're looking at kind of the current state of things. It's like, man, like, I don't, I don't know what the lifespan of this thing is going to be. Like if a starship is up and running in four or five years, yeah. you know, what's the longevity of spaceship too? Well, I guess the question is how cheap can they get it? Right. It's like, like, it's amazing to look at that as, as the question, but it's like now that would be the commodity way to get to space. <laughs> That's like the, well, the, 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 uh, but I don't, again, I mean, I'm not up to date on the latest version of this, but those engines they use are essentially like Estes rocket engines. They're basically right. just the whole engine yeah. burns up. If, if oh I, wow! If, if so I, so so that is a more expensive that so now it would be a a, a, a bespoke way to get to space. And uh, yeah. if I remember correctly, the the fuel is straight up rubber. It's like old tires, and it just burns out from the inside, and then it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nitrous oxide, hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene, and all the fun stuff that goes with that. So and all the other right, ba bands rubber. playing at Coachella. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so, uh, I, 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 how long until, oh, <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh, fashionably, in fashion, sometimes something's very cool and cutting edge, and then it's embarrassingly embarrassing, but then bad. it becomes cool because it's, you know, so, so, in an age where SpaceX does appear to uh, be about to make going to space about as sexy as taking a commercial jet airliner in the next 10 years or so. Uh, does, does this become kind of like, yeah, but you haven't really gone to space unless you've done. I it mean, if, 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 if anyone's going to lux it up, it's going to be Richard, Richard Branson. Branson. Yeah. You know, yeah, he yeah. is, he is somebody that, that is well versed in the creature comforts, but I, I do think that this particular situation is a little daunting even for him. You know, it, it took a lot to get this thing up. Uh, it is not an expense. It is not something for which the more you do it, it becomes less expensive. Right. Uh, I I could see Branson. Branson is a very likable, charismatic, personable person that everybody respects. I could see a version of where he might just go to SpaceX and say, "Hey, uh, let's do you know Virgin Galactic chartered versions of this. Let me help yeah. make the really fancy version of this because." It is going to be like, like that's the problem with this and the problem with New Shepard is the cost when you're you're paying like a quarter like they, you know, you look at these projections and I've been in this following this industry for a while and you're like oh yeah we figure it's going to be two hundred fifty thousand per person I'm like how many people in the world yes there's X number of people who have that money after the hundredth person does it do you want to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars to do it well yeah. and yeah. Uh, on top of that uh, you're right because uh let's let's and this is a hypothetical framework please don't uh, pin me down on it but but it's like let's say um spacex uh, cracks the engineering um do you want to go to a restaurant run by engineers it's like I understand why the one star review, uh, they sat down, they ordered 2000 calories. We put the proto pudding on their plate and they ate it. Why, why the one star review? And then you get Richard Branson who understands like, you know, what the luxury experience should look and feel like. Uh, I agree. Like as a kind of a subcontracted thing, I, I, I would pay extra for the Richard Branson approved version of that going is to space. Also, if he, depending on how long he wants to stay in this game. You know, he is a serial entrepreneur that's done a million different things. Sure. So, you know, it just might be a thing where like, hey, look, we, we set out a, for a goal to do it. We did it. Like, let's figure out our our uh, uh, what we owe to people and then maybe space two. Can, can, can we call out the, the really weird part that they don't even allow carry-ons on this flight? Jesus. It's super messed up. Jeez, Louise. You want to know what, Brian? Mm. That was awkward. But what what was that joke? But you want to know what's not awkward? <laughs> Going to patreon.com. It wasn't, wasn't until you said thing. that. I mean, <laughs> well, you want to know what? Here's something else that I'm saying. Uh, Go to patreon.com <laughs> slash weird things. Okay. Because with a seamless segue, I can bring us <laughs> to where you can get your After Things podcast earlier than anyone. You can support this show and you can make sure that the three of us have a good time on a Friday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Kicking back. That's why our slogan is Happy Monday. 
Happy Monday. <laughs> That's what we show. say to you <laughs> on a Friday. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? You'll find out <laughs> when you go to patreon.com slash weird things. When weird. somebody solves the puzzle of our ARG, then let us know. <laughs> Just exactly enter right. your credit card directly to <laughs> patreon.com slash weird things. Right. Please do. Well, one thing I haven't seen Richard Branson actually make, Brian, that mm. uh, is, is a serial, is a serial entrepreneur, to play upon that pun further. You would think that he would have done that at some point. A, like a cereal? Like a, like a, a breakfast virgin. train? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, that is pretty good. Honey Bunches of Virgins? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no regret. No regret on Bryce's no, face it, after saying should. that. <laughs> Stone Cold. I didn't name it. He named it. He's going to get uh, the last <laughs> use of his powers here. <laughs> Where the clock is ticking down. I gotta get him out. I'm I'm throwing him under the door like Indiana Jones. <laughs> get him oh in, God. get him in, get him in. Maine, are you gonna go see Dial of Destiny? Oh uh, yeah, I plan to. I'm a big James Mangold fan. Yeah. No, I like Mangold. <laughs> <laughs> and end of sentence. <laughs> I haven't heard I forgot it was coming out. Uh it's our yeah, it's it out, came out it's last out, night. It's out now, yeah. Uh, I made uh, seven million dollars. Yeah, it's a preview night, right? Yeah, I oh, know that's good. Seven millions. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's do a little after things in our weird things here, because I was thinking about this. Where I, I went last night to go see another film. My my sister in law, my Indian sister in law, she is producer of what's uh, a, a, the biggest movie in India right now, which is uh, Satya Prem Ki Katha. Uh, which is this, you know, kind of very interesting love story. It's got a little bit of a complicated twist to it, which makes it different. So we went to go see that last night, and mm -hmm. I walked by and I saw that Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was playing, and I knew that it was coming out. But like I, and it's not just this. Like I, I saw the trailer and it looked fine to me. I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't. I wasn't excited like when I saw the trailer for Last Crusade when all of a sudden Sean Connery pops up as his father. Yeah. Like, that was just like – that was like, oh, cool. I really want to see how that plays out. And I think that's – one of the things I think in a sequel to me as a writer I think about you, – you don't just say, hey, here's this and this again. You go, there's this plus this now. Yeah. You know, for uh, Godfather 2 was like, hey, what happens when you're on top? And now your enemy is world governments, you know. Meanwhile, we'll tell you what happened before. Like, oh, oh, that's cool. Like, exactly, what happened yeah, because it was the duel. It was the story of him, on, the son on top, and the father from the bottom. Like, like exactly. you, were, you were telling parallel stories. Yeah, a guy that wants to be president, you know, and a guy that just wants to feed his family. Those stories told was great. Empire Strikes Back was like, okay, you have these rebels. You have an empire. You could have thought it was over. What if the empire was so much more powerful than you imagined? What if they were? What if the stardust? What if what you saw was a minor skirmish? You know, the, the Death Star was a big deal, but that wasn't everything. And they had even bigger star destroyers, you know, bigger forces. It, it was a much bigger battle than you thought. And like that was amazing. That was just such a great like way they set the stakes up for that. Uh, I'll you know, go Dark Knight. Batman Begins is like, hey, what if you're like got. Uh, a uh, mental health issues and you're really rich <laughs> and you live in, you know, a crime ridden city, you know, you become the Batman. And then dark Knight is like, yeah, what happens after, you know, several years of being the Batman and what happens to you and what is the world like where people are like, Oh shoot, I can put on a costume and like go do crazy stuff. So anyhow, my point is like, I think really, really good sequels make you go, Oh, not oh the same. You go oh that's that's going to be a very different twist. And I think Marvel really had a good code, had a really good you know kind of formula for a while, which was you know like Thor Ragnarok. Part of what made Thor Ragnarok was hey here's Thor, cool, and also by the way the Hulk's in it too. Oh yeah. my god, that sounds really cool. You know the Spider Man movies. You know, uh, Spider-Man, you know, homecoming is we get a hey, Spider-Man plus Iron Man. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so did you feel any of that for Dial of Destiny is my long. My long uh, as much as I like Fleabag, I was not particularly enthralled with uh, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge uh, uh, being part of it, especially because the stuff that I really, really like her for as an actress, 
I don't think are the kind of things that necessarily would be in a Indiana Jones movie, although maybe they are. Uh, they just weren't uh, uh, displayed in the trailer. Uh, I think, I don't know. There's just so much of what goes into that franchise that I don't know if even the people who've made the movie have really unpacked why they were awesome beyond, or even just calculating for the idea of like, hey, Harrison Ford was a raw, uncontrollable charisma machine in the 80s. And like, if you tell these cool stories around this dude and and have colorful characters and you're also directed by peak Steven Spielberg, then like these movies are awesome. Like they, they are really cool. Uh, even the ones that aren't perfect have things that are iconic uh, or the one that wasn't perfect, you know, the uh, temple, like, you know, that, that, that is derided as, as one that is not as good as the other two, but still is amazing and has the, uh, these iconic moments. And I don't know if, anyone in the two movies that have come by, although I have not seen the, the, this most recent one have really unpacked like, okay, let's boil it down to the elements. What do we need to dial up? What's the coolest Indiana Jones story we can possibly tell. And I, I don't think that it's just Indy. We got one last mission for you because then it's kind of like lethal weapon and like lethal weapons. Great. But like, it's not, well, and and, and uh, to the lethal weapon discussion thread, um, <laughs> things we love about Indiana Jones, he can take a punch and keeps on getting up. We don't love the idea of him saying, I'm getting too old for this. Yeah, <laughs> that's not what we identify with that character. Well, or if you're going to do that. You know, I, I think that there would be a a possibility to put another super like raw charisma machine next to indiana jones and tell a story about that right like you know that's the thing that was really really great about top gun maverick is like you had other super aggressive charismatic people that were next to tom cruise so you knew with maverick you're like oh okay i can see in a modern world where he stacks up. And now it's not necessarily his cockiness that is getting him uh, through this adventure. Like it was it's in the original competence. one. It's his competence and it's his confidence and his nurturing, right? That he has to learn how to be much mirroring the first movie, mirroring his ability that he needs to connect more with his, with his, you know, the other people in, in the Top Gun Academy. Like now he has to be a father figure to these uh, younger uh, uh, pilots. And that's, that's part of the cool story. And they've never really wanted to do that. They had somebody that was very much against kind of type with Shia LaBeouf in crystal skull. And now it's Phoebe Waller bridge, which is like, again, nothing against either of those two talents. There's things that both of them have done that I've absolutely loved, but it's not, you know, like Chris Hemsworth or a Chris Pine or yeah. anybody that you would think if you were going to recast Indiana Jones, you would, you would cast as. Yeah, I think I think that for me, if you're to ask me to pitch it, you know, the story, I would do like Indiana Jones versus, you know, he's had tons of students, and some of these students may have become famed archaeologists in their own right. Some of them may have followed a good path, maybe some involved a bad path. And then I would have like a Chris Hemsworth or somebody play a former student, and it's him in a race against him. Yeah, you know, and and a, a person that I'd go, I would watch this person in their own movie. You know, I would watch I would watch Sean Connery in his own Indiana Jones movie, and like like I think people are rich. I'd watch her in a serious archaeological drama. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but but here was just sort of a different a different you know fit. But I don't know. I mean, again, I have to see it and see it. But like, I think that's man. Like that was the opportunity I thought would be like, oh, let's take you know Robert Downey Jr. as this yeah. sort of evil version of Indiana Jones. Yeah, or somebody that's yeah you know, complicated, and then you put a third yeah. kind of uh, uh, you know you throw some Nazis, sprinkle some Nazis on top, and and uh, uh, everything goes good with Nazis. Yeah, well, figure, I, I, figure it out in the third act. Well, it, uh, the, in the first movie, Nazis were part of the background. They they had a, a, a decently prominent role, but you didn't see the full force of them at the time. Second movie completely backs away from Nazis and so on. Third movie is like, what if we went all the way into the heart, you know, up to the point of Adolf Hitler signing a scrapbook or yeah. whatever. Uh, but but after that, I mean, every time you press a storytelling button like that, 
you get less of a of of of, of a feel good juice well, but, out of it. But also, it's like the coolest thing about the Nazis and Raiders of the Lost Ark was that they were into god weapons. Yes, right. Like yes. it wasn't nazi stuff it was like or regular nazi stuff it was like oh esoteric Hi uh, hitler, exotica yeah hitler watches info wars and he believes that <laughs> you know a god weapon is real and so now that's a thing also that he's quite, right yeah that's and, and also he's right you know and and so that gets you into a lot of the coolest elements of indiana jones and this is something that i do think degrades over time which is indiana jones is the atheist in a world where god is real and, and is he, confirmed as real. Not only God, all the gods are all real. All the gods are and real, they right? they just keep confirming it again and again. Every hayseed in a trailer park is 100% right about aliens capturing them and probing their butts. And that's uh, the thing. is, It's like, at a certain point, how many times can Indiana Jones roll out of bed and be like, none of this is real? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel some of that with the Marvel stuff. Like, the Marvel Universe says all gods are real <laughs> like the yeah, literally, just, they, they literally all, got them all together all in the last Thor movie yeah. yeah um which is strange it me it just seems like uh in a world where especially for like those bombastic any bombastic uh popcorny movie you want to go big and big and big and big well how do you go bigger than gods well this is my thing with, with marvel when they first announced the idea of doing secret war the coolest part about it is that everybody gets together, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh man, I can just imagine the moments in this. And we've joked about like the moment where they will introduce She-Hulk and and Deadpool, the two characters that constantly like break the meta. fourth wall, yeah. right? Uh, uh, you can imagine the moment when Chris Hem or uh, 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 Chris Evans. Captain America meets Chris Evans, the human torch from yeah. the other movie. Like same all actor, these, two different roles, all yeah. these different things. And like, it appears that by the time that we get to whatever the secret war movie is going to be in like Won't be much seven of a years, secret. well, like, we're going to have seen every version of it. Like we've, we've already seen all the Spider-Men together where, I mean, uh, if you believe some of the stuff that's coming out about the Deadpool movie, that's another one of these, everybody gets together. We've seen it in the flash and in, in DC. So it's like, you know, I do think when you're talking about franchises, when you're talking about gigantic long form storytelling, there is, you know, and, and, and there's, there's a balance because Andrew, one of our favorite or our least favorite things is the like, no, don't worry. This is for chapter nine. So we're going to tell seven really boring chapters and then hint at an interesting thing that you wanted from the first moment, the first frame started. But then in chapter nine, it's like, no, guess what? You're going to get the chapter two. Everyone's going to say this is boring and then no one's going to care anymore. So you don't want to delay stuff too far. But I also got to feel like, I don't know, by the time that we get to the everybody shows up on Battle World story, uh, I'm going to have already seen everybody. But I, at that point, I'll have seen everything. Doesn't, doesn't that just sound like Endgame also? <laughs> like... Put them all in the same movie for six hours. Well, but yeah, but at a certain point, I mean, that is the canonical ending of the comic book stories. Like you tell every little story you could possibly tell. And then when the big crossover event happens, that is what you want in a comic book movie. You do want everybody to get together. So I wouldn't want that to be different with your gigantic ending of all these stories. It is the class reunion, but if you also have a million other little class reunions in between, and, and, and it becomes less, it becomes less special. I, I agreed, because it primes you to expect that, and you don't get the dopamine rush. Um, and uh, if I can just for five seconds be the guy, you know, uh, according to the comic books, uh, I believe every single Marvel comic pretty much had less than half a page dedicated to, uh, so anyway, that story ended, and then the hero got zapped. Is he dead? Nobody knows. Next episode, or next chapter of every single one of the ongoing comic books was, oh, boy, that was crazy. I hope you get to find out, dear reader, what just happened someday. And so it was literally a secret war. And then secret war came out and it's like, well, here's what happened on the inside yeah. that nobody talks about now. Um, not not much of a way to do it when you're just building up all the hype and everyone, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, and also they have a whole nother thing in between an Avengers movie with uh, uh, Kang the 
anonymous sources Rolling Stone article. Oh, that's not the the secret king's not the secret no. worst guy. No, 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 no. Yeah, oh, the Kang they, Dynasty I'm, is, I'm is in uh-uh. between. Uh-uh. Uh, come on. <laughs> uh-uh. Yeah. Uh, uh, the <laughs> do you, do you know the plot of Secret Wars? Uh, uh, in the comic. In the comic. It, it's the scroll, right? And nope. no. No, it's not. It's not the scroll stuff. Nope. There's a separate yep. universe okay. where there's one being who has all the power of a universe. He's called the Beyonder, and he just causes all of the greatest heroes and villains to he he cobbles together a planet where uh, you, know, you might have a mountain on a three acre plot, and next to it a grassland, next to it an ocean, and so on. It's Fortnite. Uh, yes, and then and then uh, they all battle to the end, and and somebody wins. Uh, but then. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, literally but you yada 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 through the whole story okay no no it's yeah. literally important i mean it, it was it was yes. it was like let's do a big team up but this time instead of them fighting somebody else they fight each other and it, then they eventually fight the guy who brought him there uh however there was secret wars 2 which is after that is resolved beyonder comes to earth as a fish out of water and he's like hey Humans seemed pretty cool when I summoned them to my planet. I'm a god in living form. Teach me about being human, everyone in each of the Marvel properties. Cute, perfect strangers <laughs> theme song. It, it, was, it was really something. It was amazing. Oh, a uh, 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 Beyonder Bartokamus, you shouldn't need a taco <laughs> with your feet. That sounds uh, like a thin. comic book. It yeah. sounds thin it sounds for like a story. A <laughs> um, it sounds like a reason to make like a video game. Like, I don't know, make a battle royale video it's, game. It's Fortnite. I mean, I'm sure they will when they eventually do it. Anyway, but but going back to the the Indiana Jones thing, uh, I'm curious. It's got a lot of really, really good talent on it. Uh, and and I actually, Bryce brought up the Rotten Tomatoes, and it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like, I had, people were talking in my chat uh, on Twitch today that it was like Crystal Skull reviews, but it looks better than that. 67 critics, 88 audience. That's not the first on the first day. From the with the audience score, all right. Uh, how many on the panel are going to go see the the Dial of Destiny? What are you, you going to not go see it? I'm uh, probably. Yeah, I mean, I'm either it. buying a ticket to complain about it or buying a ticket to enjoy it. I'll find out once the credits roll. Yeah. I probably, or maybe um, I'll find out when the after credit scene shows up. <laughs> uh, Andrew. So, uh, well, uh, about the whole hey, it's not Crystal Skull. Um, go back and look at the Rotten Tomatoes for the critics for Crystal Skull. Oh, really? Was were they good? Did Crystal Skull get good reviews? Seventy-seven percent certified. Ah, ah, ah. that movie was, was Inko Malenko. And the problem you have to particularly fan like you know fan, franchise type films is the first few days, first you know first four or five days, you cannot trust the audience reviews. Yeah, because you know the person that pays to go see the twelve thirty a.m. screening. Is primed to love a thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 yeah. Exhibit A: The Phantom Menace. <laughs> Boy, was there a delayed yeah. reaction to assessing that movie? Some people had to see it six times in one summer before they finally figured out that it's garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I do wonder. I don't know. I really, now, now, now I just. We're, we're now, I don't know. Now, now I'm thinking about the Phantom Menace. <laughs> Misa thinking about the Phantom Menace. Uh, <laughs> that was, you know, like I, I bought multiple tickets because I was so excited. It was new Star Wars. How could they go wrong? And I remember watching it and like the first, that first, like the scene where they're like. Had a delegation in there, the cockpit view is this. And I'm like, how am I bored? I remember, no, no, no. I remember the first time that I was hanging out with you and, and the Phantom Menace had yet to come out, and we were talking about how cool Star Wars is and how excited we were for a new Star Wars. And I brought it up, and Andrew goes, Did you see? I think it was 60 minutes, but it was somewhere where they were like doing like a little preview of it. He's like, Did you see the 60 minutes thing? I'm like, no. It's like, you see Jar Jar? <laughs> I'm like, no, I, I didn't. And it's just Andrew just silently shaking his head. <laughs> like, we don't know how much of, uh, of, of him he's in the movie. We don't know how much. We don't know how much. <laughs> he was in it a lot. He was in it a lot. <laughs> I, I, 
I was an example of somebody trying to convince themselves, you know, <sighs> that like so hard. I tried to give that so many chances. I just, I remember because like Justin, like I went went into the classroom and saw Justin there. Uh, wandered onto campus as an adult, as I did. Yeah. Um, and, and he's like, it's it. I'm like, yeah, it's, 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 I'm trying to convince myself. <laughs> it's, good. it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Got a little heat. It's good. A little heat, right? Yeah. A after. Got a little sleepy yeah. watching it, but may I was just too excited. Free nap. Free nap. Exactly. I mean, it it, it nap. did come out at midnight, and it was 2.30 so, in the morning by the time I So died. I was in high school and got a permission slip to go see it twice uh, because I convinced my newspaper class teacher that this was the only time for which I would be able to see it within then three months, and we needed to review it for the paper. And so I literally got a sign-off from everybody so I could skip school and just go see that movie twice. Uh, and when we were there in the morning people who had seen it the night before and slept in their van to see it again the first uh, night were there at the front of the line. And we were like, do you see it? And they're like, yeah. Mm. And we're like, good? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well, this, I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Misa no want to... <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, yeah. Do we have any picks? I I do. Uh, I went and saw for a second time. Uh, I saw Asteroid City. I've seen it twice now, and oh, wow. uh, uh, you know how sometimes you'll see a movie and you'll think, uh, uh, well, that story didn't hold up the second time I watched it. I'm looking at you, Spider Man across the universe uh, or multiverse, um, but. Uh, but here's wonderful news when there is no story and it's just pure undistilled Wes Anderson, this lyrical, gorgeous cinematography, incredible sets, beautiful pastels an all star Armageddon cast. Um, it uh, turns out it's as exactly good as good the second time around. It's so, so great. Um, the only curious thing is why is Bill Murray not there? And the answer is he had COVID during the time, which is why Steve Carell is there. And Steve Carell is oh, very Steve, good. Steve Carell took the took yeah. the Bill Murray role. Yes, uh, of the guy who runs the 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 Motor Coach Hotel or whatever. Yeah. It's great. It's great. It's great. I'll watch it. A th I'll watch it on a dare. Uh, if you ever meet me out in the wild, shake my hand and say, "I dare you. You wanna?" And I'll say, "Asteroid City," and then we'll go see it again. Look at that! Wow, Hot, incredibly high praise for. A movie with no story. I mean, it is exactly, it's exactly Wes Anderson. <laughs> God, is you're, good. you're damning it with such pain. <laughs> well, I mean, I think, I think his, his review is if you're, if you're into that, yes, boy, you're going to get it. Yeah, if it's not your bag, then this is a warning. It's either a advertisement or a warning label, yes. <laughs> depending on who you are. Uh, Andrew, you got a pick? My pick is the movie uh, Satya Prem Kikata. Uh, because uh, family worked on it. And even my mother-in-law, you'll see a credit. If you see the movie, you'll see in the credits, she did the desserts. And it's a big movie. Like her company, La Creme, is her, that's her, she makes, she has a candy company, a dessert company. So uh, anyhow, um, was very, very neat to see that on the big screen. Very, very proud of my sister-in-law. Very proud of her family. Very proud of everybody who worked on it. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Hell Satya yeah. Kikata. Uh, my pick is, uh, no, dude. <laughs> And take it into a different direction, but uh, a podcast oh. called uh, The Story of Our Times, which is the podcast, the daily podcast of the Sunday Times of or the Times of London uh, and the Sunday Times. They did a two part episode about the origins of COVID. And I remain steadfast that this is a conversation that we should not shy away from uh we should not throw up our hands and say well no nobody knows know. uh it's a very important topic the origins of it are extraordinarily important and have implications going forward and the research that uh was done by two of the writers for the sunday times i think is exceptional and uh my friend manveen rana is the host for it uh but i have very much i, I have like 10 minutes left in the second episode but uh I think it makes an extraordinarily compelling case 
through not only FOIA information, but also independent research that uh, not only was this an escape from a lab, but the programs that were being used or that were in process to make this uh, have very interesting uh, uh, ties to the Chinese military and to American funding, you know, and there's, there's a reason why not a lot of people want to talk about this because it will be very, very embarrassing for a lot of different, very for, important for two hey, of the biggest I'm, superpowers on the planet. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I do not like you spreading this racist misinformation <laughs> when we it was a bunch of Chinese people to fish market. OK, yeah, yeah. Where the outbreak. That's, yeah. And that was the other yeah, thing. That, is, yeah, it, that's the, I'll just sort of, yeah, that's the funny thing is we're poised with you're told that, yeah, it was an international screw up that we were involved in is the racist theory. And the non-racist theory is apparently just blaming it on some middle-class Chinese people in a food stall. Yeah. Well, and, and that was the other thing that, uh, you know, it, it sometimes helps to just sort of get out of the echo chamber of the conversation back and forth uh, because that can get reductive and, and sort of just take the 40,000-foot view and look at the facts up to and including that uh, Wuhan is thousands of miles away from the caves for which we assume that this uh that this virus originated from like it's not next door thousands thousands of like miles the distance away. from carlsbad cavern to orlando florida yeah is how far away they are yeah that we think china and we're like oh yeah i don't know it's a country in the same way that a bunch of like people from Europe will be like, oh, I'm coming to America next summer. I'll be in New York. Maybe I'll come see you. <laughs> they land uh, in America. They're like, hi, do you know Doug? Yeah, it's, it's just, it, it, there's, it, we, I don't blame anybody for not having, uh, you know, a great grasp of the, the geography of China, but it was very, very, very far away. And, and for it to be at a food market or at a wet market is its own thing. And anyway, there's, look, don't take my word for it. Hear it yourself. Stories, ba -da, ba -da. stories of our times. Stories of our times. Uh, uh, go ahead and, and and listen to it. I think that it is a very sober um, and well researched uh, uh, explanation of some of this. Nice. Uh, I got a pick. Go. Uh, uh, I I talked about this. Maybe this was on, on the Court Killers podcast, but uh, I had a really good time uh, watching a video essay. One of those famous hour plus long essays on on YouTube about uh, myhouse.wad, a, uh, <laughs> a, a seemingly... Oh, my God. Yeah, a, 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 a doom wad. Mm -hmm. a, a seemingly simple uh, mod about a, a person making uh, their house, which e expands into this much longer, uh, more intricate story. Um, the, the, uh, the essay by Power Pack, I think, is pretty good in terms of kind of putting you first person into like, I'm playing the thing, I'm trying it out, um, without having to get into like, actually solving the very specific things that you have to do um, in the game. Uh, it's cool, there's Shrek in the game, you can kill Shrek. In fact, you have to kill Shrek at one point. <laughs> uh, so check it out. Um, uh, similarly, on a, on a similar note, uh, there's also a video of John Romero playing the, the, the mod, uh, and it's great watching him like figure it out and all the little bits that he notices and says, oh, hey, that changed, and it's like a small thing uh, no, you, you maybe wouldn't have noticed. Um, so both of those are very good. I'll have links to those in the show notes. But uh, it's a cool thing, and I think uh, even if you just spend an hour Looking at a video about it, I think you'll get a you'll that'll you'll that is a valid it. way to play that mod. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, what? Uh, just search for myhouse.wad and look for Power Pack. Uh, well, we'll have a link in the show notes. Uh, uh, or yes, you can do that too. Uh, P power P A P A K Power Pack. Cool beans, gentlemen. It's been weird. <laughs> Hey, I love the Power Pack comic, by the way, totally unrelated. But mm, yeah, I love the free one that came with the Houston Chronicle that was about child molestation. 
yeah, like a special episode of Different Strokes. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, good lord. <laughs> it was some strange times. Heavy, heavy stuff. Wow. Yeah, the mono, the mono culture got weird. <laughs> uh, mono the, culture the different got strokes weird. episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the free copy of Power Pack. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it seems weird. Uh, okay, do we are we gonna do some after things today? Fellas? Yes. yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, then yeah. we'll take a short break here. Yeah. Uh, if anyone needs it, use the You think Piss Frog's in there? Get a drink. Yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared. Man, there's a, uh, there's a frog that keeps climbing up Ryan's uh, septic system and crawling into the toilet. Because this it's frog, so hot outside. This frog loves pee, man. Like you got Or because he loves pee. <laughs> I think it's I think it's bad. But if he loves pee that I much, why he does he it. leave the pee? Justin, I I used that toilet like 30 minutes before you found the frog the other day. Mm-hmm. And what? I was and I was gonna it, it was not gonna be pee. Uh and that's why I had to check. It's a dirty frog. Because I didn't I didn't want to get surprised in the midst of that. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, well here's something that's not gonna be a surprise. After things is gonna start in just a few moments. If you need to go take a break, now's a good time to do it. I don't. I'm good. Nice. Good Get to us. go. Big boys. I mean, ladders. I'm on, not on video, so I mean, I could be in the bathroom <laughs> for all we know. I know. He could do whatever he wants. All of a sudden, there's, is there an echo? For Ribbit. What? <laughs> Ribbit. <though. laughs> no, you do the towel over the head. Don't come on. You know that. Yeah, Brian. It, it, you know that. You know that trick, right? Yeah. Right? Oh, you know what? I, I didn't, but now I instantly, I knew, I knew about like a, uh, Putting a blanket or something over your head, or a sheet. Yeah, let's grab, let's grab a towel. You know, yeah. just it sounded very Owen Wilsony. Just grab a towel. Grab a towel. Grab a towel. Grab a towel. Wow. Like that, 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 Owen Wilson is like the most like inconsequential. <laughs> I just realized we're, we're actually not speaker. starting. Then I will go pee. Oh. Sorry, you know, Andrew, go again. You, you said the, the most in- cap back on the toothpaste <laughs> and last longer. <laughs> you know, like, oh wow, thank you. Yeah, so yeah. Holy, smart. Yeah, I know. He should put out a, a book of two line poetry like Drake. You thinking? Well, that was the the remember it was like Merlin Mann made a comment about um life hacker. And it was like, oh yeah, because like he literally said I was done with it. Cause I was like, I kept subscribing to it or following an RSS, and then I'm like I'm not getting anything out of this. And then he said, yeah, he said, literally their tip was use dishwashing detergent. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like, 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 yeah, they ran out. They're done. Yeah, they, that's they it. don't have any more. Cupboard is bare. <laughs> yeah. The, ki- the, the kitchen sink? Co- no, that's nothing. <sighs> that's not a good word for, under, for the cabinet under a sink. Under the sink. <laughs> How's the weather out there, man? Uh, where I'm at, yeah, um, in Moraga, uh, it's actually let's see, is it got a little bit warmer? Um, right now it says it's about 91, but our our little valley is a little bit cooler than everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, we we do things a little differently in the valley. Mm -hmm. I I bought it because uh, bought bought here because of that, so. Um, yeah, I mean, we're like five degrees cooler in Moraga than the, if we go a little further out to Walnut Creek. And actually, our little valley here, we tend to be a little bit cooler. But I don't know what the outside temperature is. What? No. Oh, no! Oh, my God! Piss Frog is back, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ. Piss Frog is back. <sighs> hey, Bryce, you want to know what? What? His frog loves pee. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. He loves it. His frog. So that's now that's every bathroom. Now that's every bathroom. This frog. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like the frog is its own character. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is maybe the funniest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, Wait. we'd we'd considered a move to the uh Texas, but now uh no, not now that you've heard that Piss Frog is on the loose. No, yeah, yeah, can't sell I won't be able to sell that one to my wife. Oh. <laughs> oh no. That's hilarious. But we didn't have a live one? 
Or was there no. a live one? Oh, no, there was not. No. Oh. Sorry, false alarm. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know if, if, false alarm. if it was one of you guys that did it. Is no. what I wanted to know. I think. Uh, I think it was it's like a Bonnie thing. Yeah. Or maybe Annalisa. It was a bon bon. A bon bon. bon. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Mm-hmm. Bon bombs. That's her like roller derby. Bon bomb. Number seven, the bon bomb. All right. Okay. Uh, you ready to do some after things, everybody? Let's yep. go. LFG. All right. Then I will count you in. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Justin Robert Young. Sir. Bryce Castillo. Hi there. So, you know, I uh, I had to remember all your names without looking at your faces because I'm on audio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just Oh, wait. wait just have, you, have you been working on your memory? Uh, yes. Yes, I have been working on my memory. Oh, good. I didn't Every remember that. day. <laughs> Every day? Uh, it's... It, no, well, yeah, uh, it's funny. I've been I've been doing this deep dive, and I'll probably go into it a lot more later on. Both reading about this, building apps, trying to work on techniques and stuff to help improve it. And I think we mentioned this last time was even just making the effort to remember names, you will get better at remembering names. Even even if you just make yourself conscious, the next time you go meet people, try to remember names. I do this like all the time. Like I was at the doctor's office, you know, and I meet one of the you know one of the nurses there and she says, Oh, this is so-and-so. And I just practice. I do not need to remember their names, but I do right now. Uh, you know, and you know, uh, in the Jasmine and Rhea, you know, like just because I just made that effort to remember, which normally I would have been like in one year and out the other. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I have like amazing, perfect recall at all. It does mean though that, uh, you know, paying 30% more attention means you're paying 30% more attention. Yeah, uh, I, I tell you what. Since we've talked about it, I've I've made a concerted effort uh, to remember more, ran- like people that I see on a like once a week basis. That would be like good for me to remember their names. Mm. Like I've been I've been working on that, and even now I just like went through my head to remember all the people that I've tried to do it with, and I could remember all I could remember all of them. So I was every yeah. single one. Well, it's only three, so it's oh, okay. Not, it's not you know I'm not. And, and their names are Bryce, Andrew. No, and they're not. <laughs> Shut up, Adam. <laughs> uh, Brian Adam Brushwood. Yeah. It, it is a, a, you know, it's a thing that you have to continuously practice. And I've been reading, you know, some stuff on memory and other methods. And, and one of the things I've seen is that, like how journaling helps. Because, like, I have, like, personal goals. Like, my personal goal is... I'd like to improve my autobiographical memory. One is to help know what the hell I did. We talked about that. I'd like to remember everybody I met and, you know, also be able to call things that I read. Those are the things that I want. Those are kind of my, my goals. And to do that, another component to that, which I'm about to start doing more of, is with journaling. And journaling is lame. I think that. I stand by my claim that journaling is lame. <laughs> but it's actually, it's actually really useful. I love it. <laughs> Drag them. <laughs> No, I, 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 it's one of these things where I kind of go, all right, I see. I see what you're up to here. If you write things down, you remember them. Ah. Especially if you go back and read them later to revisit them. Yeah, but the weird thing is, is even just the act of writing it down yeah. helps commit it to memory. And so I, I may start trying to do that more and because I do – I look at like what are the practical benefits. One of it is I'm in an environment where I meet people who often need something and knowing people who have that resource or whatever can be super helpful. The most valuable people to me are the people I call like, hey, who do you know who knows this or can do that? And I imagine that in my lifetime, I've probably met tens of thousands of people and have had a, a better recall of those people then I would be more useful to other people. It uh, uh, Number one, yes, because now all of a sudden, exponentially, you've grown your ability to be a facilitator. And when it comes to network effects, uh, I think it was 20 years ago in a Wired article, uh, they, they put it as it's not who you know, it's who you kind of know, but can remember how to get a hold of them. And uh, uh, in, in terms of the writing stuff down, I remember uh, I did Texas Academic Decathlon, which is 
test taking as a sport. And uh, one of the things that the teacher did is, look, I don't care if you actually write it down, but we know this works, so I'm gonna insist you pretend to write it down, but you must choose to actually pretend to write it down. And I'll be danged if, if that didn't work. Yeah. It, it's even, I don't know. It's, I, uh, I have been recommended to journal, uh, you know, for in therapy and I don't want to, <laughs> it doesn't I, like, I get it. I get that it will probably work like with most things. Have that you tried simple. it? Not, with intention, no. You never said, dear Bryce, <laughs> I'm you. Not in this decade. I'm writing you to remember that we're the same. It's, but there, there is a dis, there's some sort of mental disconnect there of like, it, it, it almost certainly works, right? Like all of these simple advice things, they do work. Oh yeah. This but is like, the, the, like, this is like, like, like the, the, the drink more water thing yeah. where it's like, Hey, guess what? Get more sleep and drink more water, and your and your life is infinitely better. It's the dumbest advice. It's the easiest advice, and yet it's the hardest to follow because you're like, ah, whatever, yeah, yeah, come on, you don't need it. But that much well, water, I'm peeing all the time. But but at the same time, like reflecting on your day and you know processing your day and yeah. thinking on you know that that it that's all that's great. Composing your thoughts for the next day, like that. There is there is a real do, worth do, to that. Do you think that you would? be less reluctant to engage with it if it wasn't called journaling. If there was a hot new app, it's called it's called fast tracking and everybody's doing it. What you do is every night you write down what you did today and set goals for tomorrow. It's incredible. Um I uh, I don't think it's the name of it though. It does make me think of like keeping a diary which does just have like connotations a bit prehistoric connotation just like every human That's has a thought gotta, of what a diary is and what it be means. fast tracking um which kind of makes me interested well, in the apple uh journaling thing that they were teasing uh that they'll do an app that kind of just says at the end of the day hey it looks like you probably did these things and then like prompt you to do more more journaling that would be i yeah. need a nag i need someone to nag me yeah, for me, it's it's like I needed to know well, the, why the hell am I doing this? Like, I hear about like gratitude journals, which maybe like I'm pretty grateful. Like, I'm, I feel What's grateful. That? I, I'm not. What is a grat? I'm not gra familiar with that term. A gratitude journal is literally you every day you write the things that you are grateful for. And a, uh, a lighter version of the same thing is uh, people who are uh, changing their habits and trying to, uh, you know, not lean on booze to fall asleep or whatever are advised to, okay, yes, you're going to lay in bed and yes, you're going to, you know, your squirrely mind is going to want to conjure up all the things you should be afraid of. Instead, direct your mind. And instead of counting sheep, just literally name all the things that you're thankful for. And then eventually you fall asleep. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's a very healthy I think that's a very healthy thing to do. I for me personally, I, I feel pretty grateful. I don't I'm not dealing my I, I, I think I deal with just sort of different stress issues than other people. Not I mean not everybody, but then a lot than that's sort of meant for. You know, I look at for me, it's like, yeah, as a personal goal, I look at like what capacity do I, what ability would I like to have? And I go like, yeah, I would like to be able to recall my books better, I'd like to recall people better. That's one of these, you know, that's yeah. the thing. Like the first one is just faces. And I think things that work towards that goal, I'm interested in things towards, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't have any issues I'm trying to work through. Also, uh, you know, one of the things I looked at, liked about the Lisa Genova book, is she sort of mentioned something, it's only kind of in one paragraph, and that is revisiting traumatic events is probably not actually helpful for the most part, because all you do is you just keep reinforcing those things in your head. Yeah. And there are psychologists that would strongly disagree with that. But I would say that the neuroscience is pretty strong that if if you're going to the kind of therapist that makes you talk about a thing every single day in the same way without trying to frame it in a way to diminish it, you're going to be going to a therapist the rest of your life. Right. And and there is a perverse incentive among some therapists to get somebody on the hook for a very long time. Yeah. Well, I but it, but it can be in a way that they're not – they don't realize it. It can be a way they have the best of intentions, but – and they can also – you can – you know, you watch people buy into 
you know, belief sets or stuff like this. You hear somebody say a thing, like, I don't think they question it. And if you're, if believing a thing does help you with that, like, no, you can't just deal with these things that way. You have to do this. Like, okay, I guess you're right. You know, it makes sense. And it works out really well for me that it's, that's the way that it works. Yeah. Most therapists are nuts too. Oh, they all, <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. They're like I, the, I, the craziest people I've ever met in my life. Therapists. And, and we're speaking about our personal friends who yes. are therapists. Yeah. That's the thing. You know, yeah. like, what? loons. Like, and I went yeah. out with a, a friend of ours that, you know, went through school for it. And it was like one night out with the people. And I'm like, you're, you're the people helping. You're, you're the people that are like, you're all insane. You are all feral squirrels that learn a script that like that and, and, and charge money for your point of view. Yeah. The, 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 the example I give is the kids who became auto mechanics were the kids that had, could only afford the really crappy cars in high school and kept having to fix them. Good point. It, you know, and so yeah, that's who gets into therapy. Yeah, um, uh, I, I'm, I I'm saying I'm saying that the, the the practice is something that I do think is is in, incredibly helpful, and I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. there, that there's no such thing as a good practitioner. I'm just saying, <laughs> and everyone no, I, I've I, ever met has been a total lunatic. And I, I, I kind of compare that to like doctors. Like I think there are fantastic doctors out there; they're incredibly mm -hmm. capable doctors. I also know I'm not that capable of telling if a doctor is actually a good doctor or not. You know, I think I've gone through this before. I had a dentist who was a super nice guy, liked his practice, liked everybody there. And then I realized one day he was completely incompetent. <laughs> and it was like, ah, oh, I, I got confused by this great bedside manner for the fact that this dentist really was not a critical thinker because it was, a you know, one of these things where it was just – a very simple to diagnose thing. I kept asking about it and he just said, Oh, I think then it turned out to be that. But anyhow. Yeah. Um, well, this, this is like, it's like, like yeah. when I, when I went to a political conference and I'm talking to this dude and this very, very charismatic guy and he's, he's sharing all of his various different political philosophies and bringing in political history. And I'm like, like, Oh wow, that's fascinating. It's fascinating. Then it gets to a certain point. He's like, yeah. And that's why they killed Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh no, like now I got to go back and detangle like find everything. Ah, oh, geez. All right. Whatever. Mm. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, but back to all this, the memory stuff, things like that. Um, I've been thinking a lot about what is it going to be like if we have stuff like the Apple Vision, you know, Quest is, I or actually just ordered the uh, Quest Pro, by the way. Which one is that? This is the the newer. Yeah, but but the but the the, the super expensive one, like the yeah. the one K plus one, right? Yeah, they, it was fifteen. They knocked it down to one thousand, and and I got it because it's going to be you know six months before you know any you know uh, plebeians like myself get my hands on a Apple Vision, and I do a lot of development and yeah. you know kind of curious about development stuff, and the Quest Pro has. Uh, I believe it does have eye tracking and it has good hand tracking in there. And oh, so uh, uh, the hand tracking is better, but I, you know, I wouldn't advise anybody to get it. I would wait, wait until they'd come up with the, the meta quest three. Cause that's going to be the one that's should actually have better resolution than this and have good features. It won't have like uh, all the features in it, but that, you know, but if you're a developer, sure. But otherwise, no. Um, yeah. This was the one that they initially, the reports were at least that they wanted to make them kind of like fleet, devices for offices to build up the idea of the metaverse as a place in which you can get work done. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That it didn't. Yeah. That sounds misguided. I figured. But it did. Yeah. Didn't, Go ahead. didn't you just ex describe the pitch that Apple just made for the vision <laughs> is it could be a place to get work done. Uh, and I think that device will rise and fall on whether or not, it can. The difference is also that they are selling that to people to bring into work yourself in the way that you would buy a MacBook to bring right. to work. Uh, what Meta's idea was like, oh, we'll sell them to the average person at 15, but what we really want to do is go to X company and say, hey, you should buy a bajillion 500 yeah. and give them to all your execs so you can always meet uh, uh, X, Y, or Z. That was the other thing is that like, their pitch for get work done in it was have a meeting where Doug's a squid. Right. And it's like, it's not, Hey, run all your apps and do email and possibly Photoshop and like all these things that, you know, are actually work. Um, yeah. They were like more just like, Hey, you know, zoom 
What if Doug was a squid? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He, it definitely sets up a metaverse where meetings are the only thing that gets done. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, it's a, it is. They want it to be a place to get work done, but is it a place where you can get work done? And that was you look at the early the early PCs, you know, the late seventies and early before you had the IBM PC. They were, you know, we had you had uh, literal paper. A calc. What's that? Or literal paperwork. Typewriters yeah, yeah, you and know. stuff. Yeah, and it took it took you know, in the embrace of like first the Mac with like, you know, TypeScript and whatnot to be able to actually do, you know, really things that looked as good as did come out of a typewriter. And then all of a sudden it became better than what you could produce because of, you know, all the little office printing applications and stuff. But like Visicalca spreadsheets, that was a big deal. Like spreadsheets, spreadsheets are sort of don't get as much attention. If you think, think about this, the app that made the Apple II really t kick off sales was VisCalc. The thing that made the IBM PC was like Lotus Notes or whatever, like that was the same thing, was really spreadsheet applications because that gave you a thing that was clearly and obviously much, much easier to do on a computer than anything else. Because otherwise spreadsheets were like doing entry books, was doing having to you know, do the math, math yourself, doing all that. It was clearly, oh yeah, that you can't, you, you would not want to go back after that. And to this day, do you know what they say the number one programming language in the world is? Excel script? Basic? Yep. It's Excel. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I There's mean, more, more people work in that apparently than any other language. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's relatively easy to learn. You know, I, I, I'm presuming it's similar to the same language in Google Sheets. Like, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to get over just the, Everyone uses it factor, right? Everyone uses Excel or, or Sheets, I guess. But, you know, there's only so many, uh, like, like for, for, for video editing, you know, we use the Adobe Suite uh, for, for a bunch of stuff here. And these are, these, by many people, the best capital P professional software, industry standard software to use. And it is constantly broken. It's constantly behind there's all sorts of questionable decisions but, and, and that that's how you know it. you have a hit it's like when the alternative is what are you gonna do not use it <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know like i was talking with justin about this the other day like adobe audition the you know the audio editing program doesn't have folders <laughs> you can't fo you can't group items in your project together you they just they're just all one big big list like wow it's that soft it, so, um, there's room for improvement everywhere. You know, but, even within ourselves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't get you off. Or is that it? No, <laughs> uh, that, that, was, that, 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 that was the sound of all of us wondering where this was headed. <laughs> no, and that was that was me firing off a uh, self-help non sequitur <laughs> and then moonwalking out of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think that we're going to be seeing a very interesting kind of, you know, paradigm as these things become better, as they become slimmer. If you look at you look at the progression of from the Oculus, the first quest to looking at like the quest three and how they've made it much thinner. Yeah, um, that's that's helpful. And, and there's going to be different ways there there's you know things on the drawing books that say like okay if we can solve this engineering challenge you know we can get things to even you know even smaller and smaller um the contact lens display is still uh, uh kind of an engineering fantasy because of just you just it's really hard to just put things right on the surface of your cornea and have you see them clearly um but you know, maybe someday, but until then, I think you might get lighter and lighter frames and you might get projected systems, things like this. But it is, I think, you know, it, where that time frame is, I think it's going to be a lot of like slow progress like we are and then a bunch of jumps. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and that that would be consistent with where we are now. You know, we've seen, especially in this in this tech, like as processing power has become more and more, you know, it follows a fairly linear path. The you know, the, the, uh, uh, components getting smaller, cheaper, lighter, that you can do the stuff that like the vision pro is going to do is 
remarkable and amazing. And that, that will feel like a big jump and, and then we'll see cheaper knockoff versions of what it can do. And, and I think more and more that'll just be the, uh, the, the jumping off point, hopefully. Would we do our podcast in VR? Uh, yeah, I'll I be mean, uh, that's not the real question. Cause the answer is obviously yes. The real question is, will we do it more than once? <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. That's, that's the question. Like, like if, if we are all of a sudden put on our headsets, like, uh, for our viewers at home, our listeners at home, one of the things that we love to do that we just have not had time, or maybe they've had time to do it without me is playing the game Dimeo. Yeah. Do you guys want to describe Demio to our, our listeners? Yeah, it's a tabletop uh, RPG turn-based uh, picture playing Diablo, but not in real time, where you have to plan out your moves. If you're familiar with a Warhammer 40K or something, uh, where everything is kind of turn-based and you only get so many things to do. Um, it's a tabletop VR game. Uh, yeah. No, it's great. Um, uh, also, uh, when I think of it, I think of how my neck hurts. <laughs> because because we're all crowded around looking down. Mm. Got to tilt the board up, Brian. You know you can do that. Yeah. When they've uh, got so, they've got demo now for the non VR platforms too, so you can just oh, so you can play. Can you play the same game with a non VR yes. person? Yes. Oh, awesome. I mean, we yeah. finally get to kill the Rat King. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Maybe. But it's little, it's a little, very fun experience. Where, yeah, it's it's a thing that it, it's what I call kind of like a non obvious VR experience where we're we're not running around quarters doing this is. We're sitting around the D&D &D table moving these characters, though, but we're able to play with game pieces and have interactions that are cool and play virtually. Those kind of experiences, I think, we're going to see a lot more of. And, and a, a game like Demio, where, you know, you can go sit in your kitchen and play it or whatever and kind of have your environment around you and have that persistent table and walk back to it and in and out of it is going to be very interesting because all of a sudden – you know, it's not like, you know, you just say goodbye to the wife and kids and say, I'm going to be gone for two hours. I won't be here. It's going to be like, yeah, you're playing this thing. You can talk to other people and you can interact and walk with it. Those kinds of experiences, I don't think we've really thought through what it's going to be interesting when you're doing mixed reality. Yeah. A, uh, yeah. A VR version of tabletop simulator, you know, if they figure that out, then you open the door. But I think, I think that's, that's the real again among the things that we will see whether or not apple vision pro can deliver on its promise is the concept of have an immersive world that doesn't require you fully disconnecting uh yeah. that that you can bounce in between almost seamlessly in the same way that we can be in our phones and then talk to somebody right i mean like, imagine, imagine bryce is using an apple vision or whatever right now and he's using he's got his control board okay his VR control board. You look over and you see Bryce. He's got his virtual control, 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 right? But what you don't know that Bryce is also controlling his Marvel game or playing mm -hmm. Timmy. <laughs> mm. Bryce, you double dipping? Yeah. <laughs> Procrastination at a new level. Damn. Multi, multi crastinating. Exactly. He's bidding on Facebook Marketplace right now. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get those enchiladas. I swear. That's the thing is be like, oh, yeah, he's, he's here with us. He's working right now. Yeah, but is he really fully here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, to some extent, we, we already kind of live in that universe with our cell phones in kind of a proto way. Oh, I agree. I think the difference is like I went to the movie theater yesterday and I look around. I want to brag, but I did go to the movie theater. Mm -hmm. um, and I look over, I look behind me and I see the ticket taker has got her phone out and she's tapping on the ticket, you know, tapping on this. I see like a snack bar guy in the corner on his phone tapping on. If I were the manager of the movie theater, I clearly know they're not doing movie theater business. Yeah. No, they are, uh, uh, they're on their own, their own time. Yeah. Yeah. So I went up and I complained. No, but like, but like if you're all of a sudden in VR, like, who knows? Who knows what you're doing? You know, like, oh yeah, no, I'm doing a, I'm looking at the inventory in the stock room and doing a fill there. Is is uh, how much do we feel like the mixed reality is the final uh, form of widespread VR? One of these different modalities is going to take over, whether it's mixed or full VR or. Do you little... think that though, Bryce? Do you really think that one will win? Uh. Uh, yeah, in that I think a lot, I think 
there will be uh, there will be something for of uh, all of these things. Do but you one of them really believe be, it, though, Bryce? But are do really, you, are you believe willing to pledge your life? Are do you, you really believe truly committed <laughs> to this idea? On the edge of that cliff, I'm are you ready to swan to dive into that? To back down from something that I think the idea that there's only going to be one. I don't, Will I, you <laughs> rue the day that you said <laughs> only one I don't, would I, win? I, well, I hold on, let me Bryce finish the chance to think this through because I me, totally disagree with him. Uh, just, Bryce, just we're going to give... <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, look, uh, there, will, there will be something of everything, but I think... I think there's going to be one that's a, that everyone says, if you're going to put something on your head, go get that one. And, and there will still be the sit down thing. There will still be the thing where you get strapped in and they put you on one of those running, those running wheels. So like, it, there, there will be versions of all of that. Cause there's no reason that as tech, this technology should go away, but one of them's going to be the top dog. It'll be sort of like a Mac versus PC thing where it's like, well, yes, of course you need a computer, but which, you know, do do you want the one, you know, let's say, yeah. Or, or I mean, think of it more know, like PC DOS versus or, Linux. Or it's with more PC Windows, versus Linux yeah. than that. I, I like, actually think more that the difference between VR and mixed reality and AR will be more like screen sizes or form factors. Like like they're just going to be different things that we need for different problems or, or uh, uh, things that we like. It, it's uh, I, I, I don't think that one will quote unquote win in in the sense that it will take away from the others in the same way that I don't think owning an iPhone means I'm less likely to own a MacBook. For some people, it is. You know, what, owning and- owning a good iPad is better than having a Mac. Like my my wife pretty much now only has a a good iPad with a keyboard. And that is her her primary thing that she uses in her in her day-to-day life. So that did kill a MacBook for her that she might have otherwise wanted to buy. Another uh, I think pretty good proxy is is the fact that I, I bought two uh, uh, Apple watches and uh, and wore them each for about a week and then uh, and then went back to first it was going back to my pebble and that now it's this Garmin e-ink device because uh, it turns out that I don't want to charge to anything charge ever yeah. yeah and that's just apparently fundamental that's the to thing me. that's the thing yeah. for you yeah and and I do think that for some people, I mean, look, I genuinely believe that Apple is looking to cannibalize MacBook and iPad sales with Apple Vision Pro. I think that they are looking at that as a thing that will long term erode their sales in, in, in that. And so I could see in a world where let's say that that pans out for them and it is that successful that, yeah, I have my Apple Vision Pro, but you want to know what? That's kind of for work. Um, I also want a more lo-fi thing that I do other stuff on or, or that something I, more discreet, less distracting for, you know, if you're going out socially, you want to be able to mm-hmm. receive maybe alerts. something that has a private web browser for private web browsing. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, so it so deletes browse, the history, something that, yeah, puts comes, up a curtain. It comes account. with a private bank account, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that. I mean, <sighs> At the end of the day, yeah. If we go down, if you go down the Which, by the way, far, it's only three nineteen at this point. If you go down the timeline far enough, at the end of the day, it won't be. It won't even be head mounted displays. It will be like glasses or something. The smallest version of these will be what we inch and inch and inch forward towards. Um, yeah, and, it, uh, and they won't look uh, anything because like that, that gap. I, I agree. So, like right now, they're like ski goggles. But let's say they get small enough that you have two choices: you can either put on swim goggles or uh, an almost indetectable pair of regular glasses that that gives you a very. I mean, I don't low, know. I, I think whenever we experience. and Andrew, you've probably followed the patents on this far closer than anybody else on the show. But uh, I I tend to think that the future of this is probably just more lighter, smaller kind of form factor versions of what we've seen. Yeah. I don't know. I think that I, one of the things I've made the argument for is that if you look like I'm sitting in front of my computer right now and uh, you know, I got the, I got a 34 inch display. This display is bigger than every single television I grew up with. Right. By a huge margin. Um, and I'm sitting way close to it, mom, stop me now. Um, 
but uh, my, you know, where, how long, how much bigger? And I think there is a Moore's law for display sizes, and it gets to a point where you start to say, I need more and more screens, and then how are we going to get those screens? There's going to be a lot of ways we'll get those screens. One way is going to be VR, is going to be you know spatial systems that do, you know, let you put on a glass scene rally. Another one is you could start just like when you every light bulb you get might just be a laser projector. Mm. And you start designing things around where you just put flat surfaces and stuff and blank walls where you want it. And it will just make a pretty wallpaper when you're not using it. And then it will turn into the thing and you can do really cool stuff too. Remember those demonstrations we saw like those rooms where they would project like on several different sides and somebody yeah. could walk through. Yeah. And you, yeah, you can do really cool stuff. If I just say, Hey, I only have to convince this person from this point of view that this has depth or to it, whatever uh, there's, I don't know. I think it's going to be, I think, I think I like Apple using the term spatial computing because what they're trying to say, forget the medium, forget about the medium. It's going to be, there's going to be different devices. There's going to be different ways that we're going to do it. So has, what, has Pat, anybody yeah. attempted, uh, you, you, you just caused me to think of a, a silly thing. Uh, I was thinking about like uh, what would the most comfortable version of a VR experience look like? And I realized it would literally be wearing an eye patch that covered up my left eye. So I only saw things through my right eye. And once I did that, you could theoretically have enough camera sensors and precise enough tracking that your sense of 3D could be entirely through parallax and you could have projectors all over the place that that caused your room to expand out into an infinite horizon and as you you know as you walked around um well ar yeah yeah that was the example i was trying to bring up before there's like this rooms <laughs> where they where they they project that is exactly what i was trying to say is that you can basically use camera you don't need to wear an eye patch you can just have camera sense where your eyes are looking and you can do you can create surfaces that basically reflect like different like like you can use, you know, you can use, you know, like a, like a Fresnel lens or a lenticular, but you can also do things like you can do things where you have a, imagine, you know, every surface has kind of a texture to it that will take uh, an image from one side, an image from another. But even, even just like you said, you can create that effect by just those, you know, those optical illusions, right? Hey, look, it's a cube and you turn it sideways and it's super stupid long. You could do that. You could absolutely just do that in real time. So I think that's going to be an option. I think we're going to have a ton of different ways we're going to do it. And but the biggest challenge right now is people wanted people wanted the ones where I just have the glasses and then it just projects it onto the frames or onto the lens. The problem with that is remember we saw the thing about Magic Leap and we knew there was something fishy going on was because they had shadows. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's only additive light. It's not uh, you, you. You can't cause darkness to happen on your glasses. Hmm. Yeah, unless there there are some exceptions, and that is one is you can have an LCD shutter. Another one is you could have certain lenses with coatings and stuff that actually could like with a certain kind of like uh, infrared or whatever turn dark. But they weren't doing that, to our knowledge. They just weren't. They were just. Spoiler alert, you know, when they hired Weta special effects to work for them, <laughs> turns out they were using Weta to do VFX for them. Yeah, turns out it was that right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. But I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that I like having these conversations because as we talk about this stuff and we try to think about, like, what what will be, you know, neat. like I said, I'm sitting in front of this. I look at how much bigger this monitor I have is then the original Mac display. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and is, hmm, we, we have so much of it, of, of, of uh, I don't know. We are in 2d computing already. So it's, I, oh, let I, me I feel like the ant that doesn't know about people. Like there's, there's, uh, th there's new dimensions that could be possible with a spatial 3d computing space that I, we have never, we don't know yet. I was I'm making some notes yesterday about the whole idea of what would, what would a document look like? What, what would be the advantage of putting something into 3d? 
you know, if you had a 3D document, you know, what would be that? Is it the idea that I can pick a thing and rotate it and get more data about it? Is there something about a spreadsheet? Is there something cool or useful that comes from that? And maybe there will be, <laughs> but I don't, I don't immediately know what that is, but I'm also excited to, for someone to figure it out. Welcome to our bold new futuristic prediction show. <laughs> maybe there will be. <laughs> Look. I feel like that's a great way to go out. Just leave yeah. that, leave that as your thought, dear listener. Maybe <laughs> it will be. Oh, <laughs> screw off! Come you on. know what? Actually, I, 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 I'm kind of on board with Justin's take. That hey, one. hey, <laughs> hey, guys! Maybe, just maybe. Mm-hmm. It will be. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Be. I, 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 picture, this, picture this is why Bryce I don't have enthusiasm. In a this is, uh, Bryce in a pink. Price, Bryce in a Panama hat, standing on some like Mayan pyramid steps. <laughs> He's got a pipe. Him. Yes. <laughs> Big drone Bryce. shot to come in. Uh, <laughs> no, we're seventy style, sixteen millimeter Arthur C. Clarke mysterious. Oh, rule. perfect. Yeah, Moy, great. Dirt, I love uh, it. Yep, that it's Bryce. Bryce, take out your pipe. Yeah. And tell us. Take us out. Maybe. It will have been after. <laughs> I really enjoyed seeing Bryce really tempted to go a uh, uh, crooner, driving crooner. <laughs> you got to be right next to me to understand. How lucky were we for like mysterious roles and in search of? Oh, great stuff. Yeah, it's bonkers. Uh, in our lifetime... Andrew, uh, has the population of planet Earth doubled? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. The, the easiest way to sort of look at that is to say what is like the median age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're all getting old. Okay. Yeah. A planet. Median age of planet. Uh, median age. The global median age is just over 30. Wow. Hmm. So that means the average person... The age is 30, so if you're over... The that, average yeah. person was born when I was 18. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's a way to think wow, of it. Wow, <laughs> so that means that the average lifespan in, like, the developed... Or, like, the first world is, like, nearly... You get, like, three lifetimes. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. It is yeah, crazy. world population when we were born was 3.9 billion, and now it's 7.8. So. It's set. Wait, I. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I need. I, We're about to cross eight. I need to look at the numbers again. I did not. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of. A, Do you know world's most populous country is now? Uh, uh, India, right? India, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. World's largest democracy. Billion. Well, uh, uh, we're going to shove off here, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for the weird things and after things. If you're in Austin, join us here at the Captain Quack. Captain please. Quacks. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Be there early. It's a it's a fun time. Bryce is doing live trivia uh to open us up. And then we got a great show with Andrew Heaton and Mike TV. It is a straight vibing out locals hang. It's Don't, gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna I be mean, a blast. I I I had the, know I had the I, thought earlier. You know what? I'm gonna go. I was on the good. fence. I've yes. decided I'm gonna go. Will it be a great hang? Brian, maybe. <laughs> it just might be. <laughs> gonna lose it. I uh, I pulled the stories for the bit that we're gonna do yeah. yesterday. I found one. A good one. Oh, it's di- okay. Disgusting. Okay. Yes. Disgusting. All right. All right. Okay. Anyway, thank you everybody for joining us. We'll talk to you another time. See-